Okay, hello everyone. So today we're going to be getting started with AR Foundation. Hilarious. Um, my French isn't so good, so we're gonna stick to English. Um, my name is Liam Salter. I'm a technical evangelist at Unity Technologies. So my role involves going around to various conferences like this, talking about the tech side of the engine, giving some advice, uh, maybe going over projects. Um, so if you have any pain points, feel free to grab me afterwards. There's my email if you have any follow-up questions, and there's my Twitter, self-promo. Okay, so quick overview of what we're gonna cover today. Um, so first we're gonna go over what exactly AR Foundation is. Uh, just a quick show of hands, has anyone done any kind of AR before? Okay, that's quite a few. Who hasn't done AR but is interested in AR? Okay, that's a good start. Um, so we're gonna be going over what exactly it is. We're gonna go over a few use cases of how you can use AR just in general. Uh, understanding AR space, so it's a little bit different to how you usually use Unity, um, just in terms of how you orientate yourself. We're gonna go over a few types of visualizations and a little demo. So a quick jargon buster. So I'm sure we've all heard many different terms for these types of uh, experiences, games, whatever one you call them. So we have the reality -o meter down here at the bottom. So we start off with AR. So this is the most basic implementation. It's literally taking an image, overlaying it onto a camera, maybe having a little bit of like world space tracking, but that's about it. So you're still using the actual camera, it's still all in the real world, but it's just a very basic implementation. Then you have mixed reality. So this is where you use, you know, it's a bit more sophisticated. So here you can actually interact with the environment, maybe do things like um, plain calling where you can, let's say you have a table and above and below you have an object. If you go above the table, you shouldn't be able to see below it. So these are all like these different implementations that you can do which makes it a little bit more sophisticated. It's a very blurred line, so it's open to interpretation. There is no set standard right now. Every company wants their own uh, idea of what XR is to be theirs. So feel free to take it with a pinch of salt. Then we have virtual reality, so this is full on VR. So this is you know headset on, uh, maybe three DOF or six DOF. This is where there is no pass through usage. So what is AR Foundation? So AR Foundation is our new package where you can develop cross-platform AR with Unity. So this uses both AR Kit and AR Core, so whether you're on iOS or Android respectively, you can start developing AR using those native SDKs. Uh, the benefit of this is that you know, usually if you want to develop with these, you have to go into you know, the native uh, code editors for these. So this means that you can do everything inside of Unity and it's cross-platform. So you're halving your development time essentially. Uh, also, we have lots of samples for uh, all different types of AR. So we have uh, tracking markers, facial tracking now, um, world-based tracking, so through uh, detecting planes, all these different types of implementations that you can pick up just from a package right now. So the AR industry is expected to be worth about 60 billion by 2023. I'm sure we've all seen companies like Magic Leap getting millions and millions and billions of seed funding for their you know, innovations in the AR headsets. But there's also a lot of startups that use the AR technology. So be that through construction, maybe visualizing a building over here, or maybe it's Ikea where they can visualize what is this sofa gonna look like inside my apartment. Um, here are a few examples of what's been done already. This is Pokemon Go with Abra on the toilet. I'm sure you're very familiar with this. Uh, we can use AR to measure things in a one-to-one -one space. So whenever you're working in Unity, one unit uh, in Unity is equal to one meter. So this means that any experiences that you wanna create, you can make those fairly realistic and to scale. So here we can see how much it's gonna charge us to mail this water bottle, fire extinguisher, one of those two. Uh, we can measure bananas uh, if you so want to. Uh, this is a different type of implementation using markers. So this is something I built a few years ago at Hackathon uh, using Vuforia. And Vuforia takes uh, a single image, so whatever you decide that to be, it could be a logo, it could be a piece of artwork. What the system's gonna do is it's gonna to try and identify what exactly that marker is, then it's gonna place an object on top of it. So what we did was create our own little Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh style game, where based on the side of the screen that you're on, you can actually play your own little card game. And then you interact by actually clicking these little buttons. Uh, we made that in 24 hours, it was pretty fun. Um, and this was the first time I tried AR. So this was sort of what set me on my journey, so to speak. 
So this is uh, AR Foundation running on an Android and uh, an iOS device. So here with that, we can see when we're moving the camera around, we're picking up all these little yellow dots here. So this is called feature points. And a feature point is anywhere in the world that there's information, anything that's interesting to our SDK. So this could be a difference in shade, different in texture, uh, anything that we can use to try and orientate ourselves in the world. Once we have enough of those little dots, we can then start creating these planes. So we have a basic plane, which is just, you know, it doesn't really exist, it's just there. And then as we start to see more and more of these little dots appear, we can change the vertices of that mesh to match our play space. Uh, so we can do these horizontally, we can do them vertically, and you can change which ones you can allow. So let's say you want to do, uh, maybe you're hanging up art on the wall. You can disable horizontal planes and only allow vertical planes, which means it's you know, better UX for your user. We also have a few kinds of immersion in AR. So here we can see that we have a blob shadow, and when this guy walks past, you can see how the shadow is actually being cast onto him. Uh, so this is using a few different things here. You can see that there are some real-time reflections. So what we do is we actually take the camera feed and wrap that around the sphere and use that as our reflection probe. So this means that as this guy moves around, we're actually still seeing what the, the world actually looks like in terms of like lights in the corner. Uh, also, when he's walking by, you can see that a shadow gets reflected. Um, and that's just because of light estimation. So light estimation is if I'm in a darker environment or there's more darkness around me, then I can shade part of my model. So this is very useful, especially if you're doing you know, stuff in like lower lighting and high lighting. So a good example of this is if you have a door that's slightly open, the object that's behind the door, which is darker, uh, we can shade that to, be, uh, to hide it a little bit. Um, so here are a few examples of how it's been used in the industry right now. So these few are mostly in the automotive scene. So this is a fairly basic view. So this is just to give you an idea of what is in my car. You know, we can actually do these little annotations by recognizing the, the relative position inside these, these, uh, these engines. You know, all these cars are exactly the same. So once we open that boot or the, the front of the car, everything's gonna be in the same place. So we can just add these little annotations based on where we know they're gonna be. And then the user can tap it, get more information, and sort of enrich that learning experience. Here we have um, a more of a mechanical overview. So this actually shows the components in AR through the car, which is pretty cool. So especially if you wanna learn more about the car you drive, or you just wanna learn you know, more for your own knowledge, then that is something you can do. Uh, also, we have this simulation here where IKEA lets you preview furniture in your apartment, in your home. And again, this is all one-to-one -one scale. So because we know, you know the scale of what their room's gonna be, we can orientate and scale these sofas to look exactly how they would if you went out and bought them. So if you're an interior designer, rather than having to you know, plan this out, do sketches, you could show your clients exactly what it's gonna look like. You could repaint the walls if you wanted to, you can put art up. Uh, you know, there's no really any limit to what you can do. And here we have one in the construction, so AEC. So this is where, especially clients who are working with um, you know, large, larger companies, you want to be able to visualize you know, exactly how this model is gonna look. And sometimes that can be quite difficult, especially if it's just a 3D model on a PC. To actually see it either on a smaller scale or at scale, it adds, you know, it's all about creating that kind of experience that they're gonna remember. And the more they're gonna remember that experience, the more impactful it's gonna be. Uh, a good example of this as well is if you actually do it to a one-to-one -one scale, you can actually just put this AR um, device into a headset, uh, be that a you know, uh, Google device or whatever, and you can actually walk around in AR space. So you could do this with VR, you could do it with like the Quest that's just come out recently. Um, but doing it in AR, it still overlays in the real world. So you know, you're not gonna bump into anything because damaging your clients probably isn't the best impression to make. Okay, so this is a really, really cool uh, proof of concept. Oh, there is audio, okay. Um, so what we're doing here is we're taking all of this information that we have and rather than just doing a simple overlay, we actually transform what this object looks like. 
And all the interactions that we do through this is through... Okay. Um, so all the interaction that you do is based on orientation. So here you can see like he's moving his finger around. You know, that's pretty easy to do in AR because we already know the position of everything around us. Um, you can do things like tilt as well. Again, we know the orientation. So the only limit to our control is you know, how we implement them. And the cool thing about this is because it is on your device, which, which is usually connected to the internet, you can do things like send messages. So these are all things that you know, they're going to enrich that experience, be that for a, you know, a client or just, again, for your own personal knowledge. Uh, here's like an actual raw overlay of how this is actually done. So yeah, that's where we're going with AR. Uh, so coming back a little bit. So the absolute basics of AR. So we're going to explore space. So this is world space. So if you've ever used Unity before, then you know what this is. Uh, has anyone used Unity before? OK, good. So I'm going to pick on some people. So here at the bottom, we have 0, 0. And at the top, we have 1010. Does anyone want to have a guess at where Unity Chan is? I'm going to pick on someone otherwise. OK, you look like you know the answer. Right, right in the middle, where do you think that is in terms of like the, the x, y? Yeah, exactly. So we know that because you know, it's just a, an x, y plot. We know exactly where to do this. So like the Unity logo, that's going to be 2.8. Uh, but then we go to local space. So you'll experience this if you've done things like parenting inside of Unity. So here we have uh, negative 5.5 five and positive 5.5. Five. Even though we're in the same space, it's because we're, based, uh, we're, we're localizing our space within inside this model. So all of our positioning is going to be based relative to that model. So now the Unity logo is at negative 4 and 4. OK, so now we're in deep space. So this is session space. So this is how everything in AR works. And it's very similar to local space. So as soon as we create our AR session, so as soon as we take our mobile and as soon as we open up our app, it's going to create uh, like an anchor, you could call it, uh, when we start that device. And as we move around, we keep the relative position of that anchor. So the phone is going to transform. So now it's in the negative, now it's in the positive, uh, as far as like the Y goes. But this anchor always stays the same. So if anyone's done VR development before, uh, we use a very similar technique when it comes to orientating those. Uh, the benefit of this is that not only do we have the anchor point, as we move around and we scan in more feature points and create more planes, we're only adding to how well oriented we are. So when you scan enough information in, you have very, very stable tracking. And even off the bat, just with like, you know, a single plane on the ground, it's still very, very accurate. Um, one last show of hands. Has anyone done uh, marker tracking before? So things like Vuforia. OK, cool. So I'm guessing you've had experiences where you've moved the phone away, come back, and everything's been destroyed, more or less. So yeah, so that's how it works with markers. With world tracking, because we actually have these actual points uh, in our memory, and we're actually tracking it based on the native SDKs rather than just markers, we don't really lose any tracking. Uh, so I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, so let's go on to visualization. So here we can see that we've got uh, our markers and we have the planes. So every single feature point that is ever brought in, we cache that. So even if you, you know, move your camera in and back away, we still keep those tracking points in our memory. Uh, this is especially useful if you want to do something with them, either that be for an experience, maybe you want to create a mesh view of what your room looks like. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it as far as visualizations go, especially on the artsy side. Uh, then we have the plane manager. So this periodically changes what this mesh looks like. So we can change where those vertices are. You can see that as we move around and scan more feature points, we're actually stretching out technically this mesh. Um, and this is just a mesh in Unity. You know, it's just uh, it's got a collider on it. You can do anything you want. You can tap it and check for collisions and play something there. You know, this, this is all done within Unity. So all, the, all the, um, the kind of workflow that you're already familiar with, you can just do this straight away. So I'm going to do a quick demo of how you can actually do this in the editor. Uh, let's change this over. 
There we are. Cool. Okay, so as far as like AR goes, this probably takes about two minutes. If you want to start trying this right now, you can do this today. So all you need to do is go to Window, then Package Manager. Um, then you need to make sure that you have preview packages enabled. So that's in advanced, and then show preview packages. And then all we need is AR Foundation. So AR Foundation, uh, you could call this the wrapper. It's uh, the bridge between the two native SDKs. But then you also need to bring in the native SDKs you want to use. So if you're only going to be working for Android because you don't like deploying to iOS, which I understand, um, you can just bring in the XR plugin for AR Core. If you want to do it for ARKit exclusively, then you can just bring in this one. Uh, we've also got face tracking for ARKit, which is pretty cool. Uh, I tried that out before. Uh, we've also got support for the ARKit version, which comes bundled in with the ARKit package. Um, some of you might have also seen recently that there's now human detection in ARKit. Uh, so we are having support for that. Um, so anything that's happening in the AR space, we're going to be straight on it. Uh, another cool thing we're doing is object recognition. So rather than uh, recognizing either just meshes around the world or just a marker, you can actually uh, target based on geometry. So maybe this microphone here or that stage down there. Anything that has vertices, we're going to be able to track. So we have an empty project here. All we need to do is right click, and we're going to create two things. We're going to create the AR session origin. So this is what's going to contain our camera. And you can see here that it has a tracked pose driver. So this is what you'll be using if you use VR. So this is what the controls will have on them. So you might be familiar with that. Uh, and we also want an AR session. So the AR session basically just stores anything specific to that one session that we want to store. Um, but most of the things that we'll be doing will be on the actual AR session origin. So once we have those two things in, we can go ahead and delete our main camera. We can delete the directional light if we want to. And then we'll do our own kind of light estimation later on. Then we will bring in a default point cloud. So the point cloud are those feature points that we spoke about before, those little orange dots. And this is just a sparkle system. So you could change the visualization of this however you want. Um, so you can make them bigger, smaller, change the color, make them explode, anything you want. I will also create a plane manager, uh, a default plane. So this is what you saw before, that little yellow plane going around. Um, I'll show you in my demo that I've changed this a little bit just to be a bit more friendly. Um, but especially if you're doing something commercial, so not only for a client but for end users, you probably want to hide these things or make them very, very subtle just so they don't see all the, the ugly bits that go on behind the scenes. So all we do from here is we drag that in and we'll create some prefabs because we're going to be instantiating these as we create our scene. So let's get rid of those. And we'll bring in two components. So we have the Cloud Manager here. So this is where we store all of our feature points. And this is the prefab that's going to be spawned on top of that. Then we'll also have the Plane Manager. And it's going to manage the planes. And you can see here, like I mentioned, you can actually change what types of planes you read. So maybe you don't want horizontal, maybe you don't want vertical. You can choose which ones you want to allow. And, and from there, all you really need to do is deploy, and then you're ready to go. Um, so we've really made it as easy as possible to get involved with AR, um, easier than ever to get started with it. We've also got plenty of sample repositories that you can hop in and give a try. Um, so just a quick recap before I actually show you the demo. Uh, so AR Foundation is cross-platform AR development for Unity. It's available right now within preview packages. Uh, the more noise you have, the better. Um, so be this maybe a, a reflective matte surface. You're not going to have a very good AR experience there. So keep this in mind, especially if you're showing to clients. Uh, and objects are always relative to the start position. So you know, whenever you move your camera around, you're always keeping that start position in your relative memory. Uh, as far as uh, the text side goes, Right now, we don't have multi threaded rendering support. That's coming later this year, most likely. 64-bit uh, only, but most devices that only support the native SDKs are 64-bit. Uh, we can only support what the native SDKs support. We, don't, we can't override those. Uh, minimum API version is 24, uh, and you need a compatible device. 
Um, so now I'm actually going to show you a demo that I made at Riot. So um, back in November last year, um, me and some friends went to Riot uh, over in LA, and we did a three-day hackathon. Uh, anyone familiar with League of Legends? Oh, that's not a good start. Okay, two people. Um, okay, so it's a video game where you have two teams um, and you compete to destroy the other person's base, essentially. So what we did is we used their uh, API services to pull in information about these games and then actually run our own AR simulation. So what I'll do is I'll scan the area. And you can see here that we have a very faint highlight area. Uh, the mirroring isn't too great. Um, but you can see what we're doing is we're actually recreating the entire game in AR just based purely on the APIs. We don't have any access to the actual gameplay. We can't, you know, we've not ripped anything out of the game client apart from the models, but don't tell them that. Um, we've recreated everything just through API data. So we've taken positions, we've taken kills, uh, we've taken the time of the game, and you can actually see just based purely on the positions alone, we can actually visualize all of this in AR. Um, another demo I did, uh, you can see as I type AR, I have lots of demos, and I haven't named them properly. So I think it's this one. Oh, actually, no, it is. It's this one. This is why you name your projects properly. OK, so here I did some kind of UX work. So I'm mostly on the code side. I don't really work in design or UX. So I sort of wanted to get my feet wet a bit. So you can see here that we prompt them to scan a device. Then we prompt them to find a plane and then tap on the marker. So we'll scan some more planes in. We'll tap to create a marker. And now we have this marker moving in world space. And what I mean by world space is that you can see, because it's in world space, the marker actually gets smaller the further away we go. And then the closer it gets bigger. So this is actually moving relative to our world position. So then what we can do is we can spawn in any kind of object we want. So for this example, where is the door? There we go. Um, so this is uh, not a very official uh, demo, but this was something I made uh, just for a Unity tip one day. Uh, if you're not familiar, we do Unity tips every Tuesday. These are just tips on how to better use the engine. Um, so I put a portal inside of AR um, that showed off you know, what you can do with AR with terms of world space. So you go through the portal, you go into the special room, it plays Take On Me, the best song you could possibly think of. Um, and it's just sort of a, a new way to experience AR and something that's a little bit more interactive, a little bit less serious. Um, so that demo was actually customized based on uh, another demo that I worked on. Um, so Autodesk have a really cool plugin called Forge. And Forge lets you essentially treat a model as a Git repository. You can upload a model, you can make changes to that model, but then you pull it down from a URL. And then you can load that model in uh, just through the cloud. So what I did is I created a little demo for Autodesk University over in the US. And this is where we actually load in break assembly models using just a URL. And again, all in AR, uh, all perfectly tracked, no warping or sliding around, very, very accurate. And that's about it. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, my name's Liam at Unity3D. I was very lucky to get that email. That's like my main claim to fame. Uh, I have a Twitter again. And we also have a new Discord server. So for anyone who wants to ask questions, um, maybe I'm not the best person for it, especially if it's like art questions, don't ask me those. Uh, there'll be someone there that can help. Um, yeah, do we have any, any questions? Hi, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was uh, super interesting. Uh, just I wanted to know, uh, when do you plan to get the AR packages from the out of the preview packages? Um, yes, yeah, so hopefully Thanks. by the end of this year, Maybe next year. We, we don't really want to rush it. It's quite stable. It's being used commercially by lots and lots of companies right now. But the main thing we want to deliver on is that we cover enough feature parity between the native SDKs first. So even, even now, for example, like the AR face recognition, we want to have as complete a package as possible for when we push that out completely. Um, we don't want to rush anything. So 
either the end of this year, probably some point next year, we'll see. Um, hello, I, I have a question about the marker tracking. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned it, but uh, I don't remember seeing it. So uh, how does it work? And also, how does it work compared to what you have, for example, in, in Vuforia? How do you declare the markers and... Yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, um, so here we have all these different types of uh, samples. So we have face tracking, image tracking, um, also object tracking and plane detection. We'll go for camera image. I think we want this one. Um, and then all we have is just an image that we upload. Um, if you use Euphoria, I think you had your hand up for that. Um, you don't have to go through like a stage of is this suitable? You sort of have to do that by yourself. We don't have any tools for that right now. Um, but yeah, you can literally upload any logo. Um, the tracking's quite sophisticated. So uh, with Euphoria specifically, while it's great for a lot of things, um, it doesn't really work that well with basic images. So maybe like a logo or um, just a shape. But with our, our version of this tracking using the native SDKs, we can do fairly simple geometry. So yeah, you should, it should work with most things, but yeah, obviously the more detailed, the better. Um, but yeah, uh, just to reiterate, this is actually on the sample repositories, um, which is, I think it was towards the start. Um, but yeah, you, the, these are all free to download. There's plenty of information on there. Uh, there you go. AR Foundation samples, that's the one. Hello, thank you for the presentation. I have uh, a few questions. First of all, I see that you're using Unity uh, 2019.1. It's, is it the best version, actually, or to use, to use with uh, AI Foundation? Uh, yeah, so AI Foundation is mostly focused around, you know, it's a, it's a new feature. Mm -hmm. So the more, the, the later the version, the more up-to-date it's going to be. It still works with 18.3 slash 4, like especially .4 if you want to do long-term support. Um, I'm not 100% sure on whether we'll support uh, things like face tracking with .4. Um, we might do. Um, I'm not too sure, though. But yeah, feel free to give me an email. Um, I can yeah. find out and send you an update. Yeah. No, I, I was talking about 2019.2 of the, the beta or alpha version. It, uh, it kind of crashes, oh, okay. on the, especially on the NB uh, low-end render, render pipeline uh, um, interface with, uh, with air definition. Yeah, yes. Yes, so it's quite, uh, quite well, well, you're still in preview. Uh, second question I had is, is uh, uh, about the um, pr uh, um, construction pipeline. It's quite harsh right now because there is no no editor uh, simulation or uh, remote for, for for a device. Is any of the one of the two um, plan plan to come in the future? Uh, yeah, so we do actually have AR remote out right now. Okay. Um, so this is all based on a local network as well. Mm -hmm. So a good example was at GDC. We wanted to show off a lot of AR demos, and there was a lot of people interested. So what we did is we hosted it on our Unity editor machine, which was based on the network. And then all we did inside the app was just load it based on that. And we could do the exact same demo based on one machine through remote without deploying on, I think, these three devices. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think there's links to that in the AR Foundation samples. Uh, but if you just type in Unity AR remote, it should come up anyway. OK, thank you very much. Um, the quality is lowered just because we downsample um, what the resolution is. So it's not perfect for getting a, a great idea. Uh, it's similar to the, the software I just use right now. Um, so just imagine that, but a little bit less fidelity. And that's what you get with remote. OK, well, thank you very much. And the, rapidly, the last question was about the image tracking. Uh, I, right now, um, I've been doing some tests, I think. I, on my device, the, the performance are really low with, uh, with our foundation because uh, compared to before, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lag of about two, say half or half a second or one second in between the image uh, position following. Is it my, my code or is it something you have seen? Um, the performance compared in air definition and before, yeah, on this very specific issue. Uh, I've never really had any kind of performance issues myself. Um, I guess it's sort of dependent on the device. Have you tried it with other devices? It's a Samsung S7. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that should work. Just fine. Um, if you have your project with you, I could take a look at the codes. Um, but yeah, otherwise, feel free to just give me an email. We can find out why that's messing up. Cool. Any other questions? Perfect. Well, hope you enjoyed the talk, and thanks for having me.